In this tutorial, we'll be creating the number selection effect inspired by the Severance show. So a while ago, I came across this post showing a cool technique on how to recreate this. And since I started watching the show now, I figured I'll mess around with it and see how we can recreate it. So let's go ahead and create a new solid. We'll call this one numbers. And since my comp is 1080p, I do want to make a solid a bit bigger. So I just made it 2K instead of 1080p. Let's hit OK. And the effect we're going to be using is called Particle Playground. So it's just another particle effect, it's less commonly used, but for this effect it's actually going to help us out a lot. So first thing, let's go into the cannon here and we'll disable the particles per second and also the velocity. So set them both to zero. Let's go down to our grid here and this is where we're going to be generating the numbers. So we just want to increase it, maybe make it comp size for now. So 1920 by 1080 p and let's give it some particles here. So 50 by 50 and we can see that they're starting to generate. So if we hit play, they keep on generating, but you do have some motion. Now they're basically falling down because we have some gravity enabled. So let's go here and disable it, set it to zero. Now this is a bit too much here, so I'll just set it to 20 by 20. And so they stop generating, I'm gonna set two keyframes on my particles across and down right here, just going one frame forward. And to go just one frame forward, I'm holding down control and using my arrow keys. So this way you're just jumping one frame frame. And let's set it to zero. We can always adjust this later. All right, let's start adding the numbers. So if you go in here, we got something called options and we'll select edit grid text. Now here you're going to select your font and here you're just going to put in the numbers or text if you want to and it's just going to randomly scribble through it. So let's just number bash here. I'm going completely random on my numpad. That's going to be good enough and hit OK. All right, let's go to the first frame and start increasing the font size here. And you can see that we generated a grid of numbers. Let's change the color here to maybe white and maybe lower the size just a bit more. Now I am going to lower the particles just for this preview so it's easier to look at. So we still get. Now we need to create a controller which tells us where the particle size is going to be increased or decreased. So to do that I'm going to be using a simple shape. So I'm going to go into my rectangle here and double click it. That will make a shape in the size of our comp. And let's rename this to control. We'll put it down here and add a circle effect to it. I'll make the circle red. You can increase the size a bit. This is basically going to define where the text scales up and so on. And I would do want to feather it out. So let's go here and maybe set the feather to 100. Now, if we enable the background here, you can see that the effect is transparent. So in order to give it the background, I'm going to be using a solid composite effect, switching it to black. And then we got the shape layer with a black solid and the circle on top. All right, let's see how we can connect this circle into the numbers. So we'll go in here and we'll go into the last tab here, the property mapper. I'm not sure how to spell this word. And we're going to select the control layer. Make sure you select effects and mask and here under map red 2 we can select different settings and one of them is font size so if we select font size here let's set the minimum to maybe 10 and the maximum to maybe 40 so we can see it and now if we move the controller here so i'm selecting the circle and everywhere i move the red circle the text behind it basically increases in size now let's make this more prominent so set it to 20 on the minimum and scale it up and I will also increase my particles here so across and down maybe 15 this is completely up to you and to animate this we are going to be creating a null so basically a controller to our controller so I'll just create a new null object holding down control alt home and control home will center the anchor point and the null to our composition and by that, I mean this little dot here, the anchor point is centered to the null and the null itself is now centered to the comp. Now I'll go down into the effects here under the circle and on my null object, I'll hit P to bring up the position 
and now I link the center here to the position. So now we don't have to go into the effect here. I can hide it. And basically by moving the null object, we're controlling the numbers as well. So now I can set two keyframes here. Let's say starting off here. And let's make this five seconds long going across. And as you can see, this works phenomenal. Now, one thing in the show is all the numbers are sort of wiggling when they're about to be selected. So what we can do here to sort of mimic this effect without complicating things too much, we'll go into the number solid here. Let's collapse this and I'll add a turbulence displace. I'll go to the first frame and on my evolution here, I'll set a keyframe, let's say maybe five evolutions and lower the amount to 15 and the size to maybe five. So now if we play this back, you can see all the numbers are sort of shaky. And by animating the evolution, you decide how fast they will shake. Now, this is the basic setup for the selection. You can also add a image or a shape of a mouse here, attach it to the null, and it will follow along the animation as well. Now, if you want to zoom in with a camera, like I've done with a preview, let me make all the layers 3D. I'll create a new camera. Hit OK. And we want to attach the camera to the null object. So if we take our camera tool here and holding down Alt, we can sort of zoom in here. Okay, so we can start here. Now, the reason I made the solid larger is, as you can see, we're close to the border here. So what I can do here on my particle playground is increase the width and height of my grid. And then we can obviously set different particles but this way we're just not going off screen here and it's not cutting off. So if I hit play now, my camera is going to follow the null object and it will follow along the center of our selection. Now, since the camera is attached to the null, we can still animate its keyframes individually. So if I hit P, hold down shift and hit A, I can bring up the position and point of interest, set to keyframes. Let's go to the last frame here and holding down Alt, dragging my camera tool, I can sort of rotate around it. So now the camera is following the null and we also have this manual rotation added. Now, if you want to achieve a screen kind of look like I've done in the beginning, let's go ahead and change the color of our text here. So something light bluish, maybe around here. I'll go ahead and create a background and we'll make it dark bluish around here, drop it down, actually want to make it a bit darker. So I'll just be using a curve here. Okay. Now on my numbers layer, I will be adding a glow. If you do have deep glow, I recommend using it, but let's add the default glow just for the sake of the tutorial, just a little bit of auto glow here, lower the intensity and we can go ahead and pre-compose everything. And to give this sort of a screen kind of look, I'm going to be using a CC ball action effect. So you can see here, it creates these small squares, which are actually 3D balls. And I'll set the grid spacing to one. It does tend to get a bit heavy here, but if we zoom in, you can see we're getting this sort of a screen type of look. All right, so I hope you found this tutorial useful. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.